Hi everyone, welcome to the next part in my Ragnar Blackmain paint along series. With Ragnar all painted now, we need to look at creating his display base. So in this video, we're going to be making and painting the little display base for him. So the paints you're going to need for this video are Lead Belcher, Retributor Armor, Stormhost Silver, Karaberg Crimson, Agrax Earthshade, Coelia Green Shade, Abaddon Black, Rhinox Hide, Mechanica Standard Grey, Dawnstone, Administratum Grey, Bala Brown, Zandri Dust, Morgast Bone, Talon Sand, Ushapti Bone, White Scar, Nurgling Green, and finally Wraith Bone. Now, you're also going to need some modelling putty. I'm using Milliput. It's relatively cheap, easy to get hold of. The queue is pretty quick and I find it easy to work with. But feel free to use whatever you have to hand, green stuff, whatever. It's all going to be covered up anyway. We're also going to be applying some ground texture to the base. So I'll be using this fine sand I use for my gaming bases from Warworld Gaming. I'm also going to be using some static grass. I've got this dark green grass. It's about two millimeters high, which I find works well with 40K scale minis. You can use any color you like, any color that you think will fit well with a dark display base. I've put a link in the description to where I get all my stuff if you want to get the same as I use. Now for the display base itself, I'll be using a 40mm round resin plinth that I used to make. I've still got loads lying around. Feel free to use whatever you want again though, block of wood, etc. Just as long as it'll make a nice solid base for Ragnar. I've also raided my bits box for an extra orc skull and part of a, I think it's an orc power claw. I want to add to the base to make it a bit more interesting and extend that already sculpted detail out into the bit that we're going to be adding to it to tie it together a bit more. Now, I want to add some extra rubble to the base for the same reason. So I'll be using some of this stuff, which is a high density modeling board. It is quite hard to get hold of in small quantities and it is quite expensive for what it is. So if you don't want to go to the expense of getting this stuff, you can use some old sprue you could carve down. Uh, that will work just as well. Or if you roll out some putty, especially if you're using milliput, this works quite well. Roll out some milliput, let it cure, and then you can snap it up and break it into rubble chunks. It looks quite effective. So the tools you're going to need are a sharp modeling knife, a pair of clippers, an old brush and some sort of sculpting tool. Okay, so you can see I'm about to mix my milliput. It's a 50-50 mix. It can cause allergic reactions. There's a warning on the back of the box. So I do recommend using gloves when handling it. So you just mix it together until it's one uniform color. And this usually uh, is good for about 40 minutes or so uh, of working time. So first we want to attach the sculpted base to our actual display base. I want to increase the height slightly. So I'm going to take some old sprue, cut it down to size and glue it to my display base first. Then we can glue the Ragnar's base to that. It's all super glue so it sets pretty quickly. So that's stuck well now, so next we need to start adding the putty. We'll take our modelling tool and start bulking out the base. Now, if you're using milliput like me, I find slightly wetting the sculpting tool allows you to manipulate the putty easier, it doesn't stick to the tool as much. Now while the putty is still wet, I'm going to push in the skull and the claw details that I want to add. As you can see, there's already one skull here, so adding another one into the new base will help both parts tie together a little bit better. Pack the putty down around the skull, and I find that's usually good enough to keep it in place. Don't, no need to take it back off and super glue it or anything like that. Now for the claw, we don't need the whole thing, so I'll cut it down a little. Next, we'll add some additional rubble to bring the sculpted damaged Aquila Ragnar standing on out into the new area and again help the two parts tie together. Just carve them down a little, being careful as you do it, 
and then you push those into the patty too. Now, I don't want a definite line between the Games Workshop sculpted detail and my sculpted detail, so I'm going to take an old brush, while the milliput is still soft, wet it slightly, and then start dabbing the putty around the joint. What that does, it starts to dissolve the milliput a little, turn it into a paste, which then you can sort of blend the joint area uh, so we don't get any horrible lines when we're done later. So just tidy up the base a little, and once we're happy, we can leave that cure fully. I think Millie put fully cured after 24 hours. Okay, so the milliput's cured, so now we can start to add some ground texture. This step is pretty straightforward. Uh, you take some PVA, old brush, and you start dabbing it on. You can water the PVA down slightly if you want, and then you just sprinkle the sand over it and slowly work your way around the base. You can see it's stuck down really well now. I've made sure I've brought it all the way up to the uh, Aquila so it blends in a bit better. Next, we need to undercoat with a bad and black and apply a nice solid undercoat all over. I'd use a spray, but I didn't want to risk damaging the paint job on Ragnar at this stage because we've spent too long on it to ruin it now. So 
So that's the undercoat done. I know I'll be handling the edges a lot, so I've gone ahead and masked them off with some Tamiya masking tape. So we're all ready to start painting. Okay, so we're going to start base coating all the rubble with Mechanica Standard Grey. Watered this down 50-50. And we're going to quickly block out the rubble. So that's all base coated. Next, we'll base coat the earth with a mix of Rhinox Hide and a Bad and Black. Again, 50 50 mix. Water it down a little. Uh, and you just apply that all over the textured sand areas. So now we've done that, I want to base coat all the metal areas, like the barbed wire, twisted metal, and the ammo casing reinforcements sticking out of the rubble. So we're going to start with some pure lead belcher, slightly watered down, not too much though. And some pure retributor armor. And we're going to carefully pick out the details, try not to get any on the ground or the rubble. Next, I want to start lightening up the rubble and the ruined Aquila slightly by taking some watered down Dawn Stone and quickly overbrushing the flat areas, leaving the Mechanica Standard Grey in the recesses. Overbrushing is a little like dry brushing, but there's a lot more paint on the brush. Next, I think we'll need to lighten the earth areas with some Bala Brown, watered down 50-50. Uh, 
and again overbrushing the areas to start picking out the texture and lightening it a little. We need to start tying all the areas together now. So we'll take some neat Agrax Earthshade and we're going to apply that all over the, all of the areas. Moving the brush quickly so you don't get any tide marks. Don't play with it too much. Just get it on there and all the areas covered. So we'll leave that dry for a little while. It will take longer than paint, so don't get tempted to carry on with the next steps until it's fully dry. So that's all dry now. So let's take some Dawnstone again, and we're going to start picking out the edges of the rubble. Now it's supposed to be damaged masonry, so we can afford to be a little rough with it, dabbing on the highlight to break up the edge, rather than having nice solid edge highlighting.
Now, going back to the ground areas for a little while, we're going to take some talon sand. And using a dry brush, we're going to dry brush the more exposed areas of the earth to lightening up a little bit more again uh, and give the ground a nice highlight. Then the same thing again, but now with Ushapti Bone, this time being a little lighter with the dry brush. Now moving back onto the rubble, take some administratum grey, water down 50-50. We're going to pick out the edges a little bit more, make them a bit more defined, this time keeping it as a really fine highlight though.
Next, I want to start introducing some color to the base. It's looking a little bit sterile and boring at the moment. So I'm taking, don't laugh at my pronunciation. I think it's Coelia Green Shade. And you're gonna heavily water that down uh, to a glaze consistency. And we're just going to start dabbing this on randomly on the rocks and the, and the earth. Uh, it helps break up the areas and makes the base a little bit more interesting. Next, we do the same thing again, but this time we're going to take some Caraberg Crimson. Again, heavily watering it down and dabbing it on randomly. Now going back to the rubble, take some wraith bone, watered down 50-50. And we're going to focus on the upper edges of the rubble this time. So this should be a pretty quick stage.
Then take some Ushapti bone and we're going to just lightly dry brush the, air, the ground areas again, pulling all the glazed areas together a little bit. So with that done, we can take some Stormhost Silver, watered down slightly. And we'll pick out the upper edges of both the gun cases, shell cases and barbed wire to get a nice strong contrast. And we'll do the same for picking out the edges of the twisted scrap metal on the base as well, uh, which will make it look like it's uh, sort of fresh chips against the rusted background. The last detail we need to pick out are the skulls. So take some Zandri dust, watered down 50-50. Just block out the skulls with a nice solid base coat, leaving the black in the eye sockets and the nose hole. Then take some more gas bone, again watered down 50-50. And you just start highlighting the upper parts of the skull. Next, with some watered down wraith bone, 50 50. She's just starting to focus now on the upper parts again, covering slightly less than you did in the, in the previous stage, building up that highlight.
Then take some neat Agrax Earth Shade and you start shading the undersides of the skull and the recesses and then you leave this to fully dry before you move on to the next stage. Finally, take some white scar, and this time we're going to use this quite sparingly. We're going to pick out the very sharpest edges and ridges of the skull details. Right, so that's most of the painting done on the base now. Uh, I just want to add a little bit more colour and a little bit of texture to it to break up a little bit more. So to do that, I'm going to apply some static grass. So I take some super glue and I'm dabbing it on in small dots before adding some static grass over the top. You try to make it as random as possible. and you shake off any excess back into the tub. You give it a little blow to get make the grass stand up on end. And there you go. So one last step now. Uh, the grass is looking a little bit too bright against the base uh, at the moment. So I want to knock that back a little with some nurgling green. So dry brush it lightly over the tops of the grass just to knock back the color a little. And we're done. I'll keep the masking tape on for now to protect the black edge while we're assembling Ragnar in the next video. Uh, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little video. In the next final video, we'll be getting Ragnar assembled and add the finishing touches. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video real soon. Right, so I've created a hashtag for everybody to use over on Instagram. If you want to share your progress with me, you can all see what everybody else is doing. Uh, it's hashtag Ragnar Paint Along. And remember, if you guys enjoyed watching this video, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section below. And I'll see you guys back here soon.